Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are still filming in Estonia and therefore we're going to stick to one of the local breweries here in Tallinn. And this is one that many of you will have heard of before. So we're going to go back to the north of the city once again and we're having a look at another beer from Poyala. And this is another one that was very kindly given to me by N, one of the brewery owners who I interviewed about a week ago or so now. So this particular beer is called the Virma said it's an IPA coming in at 6.5% ABV more of a west coasty type IPA this one I did actually try the beer when I was in the brewery I tried this one along with one of the versions of the Moonraker which again was the New England IPA very very nice but uh, yeah I know this is a nice beer but I think it should be really interesting to do a kind of proper sit down review of it for you here incidentally Virma Lisa translates into uh, English as the Northern Lights hence the lovely Aurora type artwork you have on this uh, on the bottle of this beer so uh, yeah thank you again to N for giving me this beer to review for you and I hope that you guys enjoy another Poyala review here on the channel so yeah very curious to see how this one turns out again and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well so let's see how we get on as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Poyala before no doubt there will be some more in the near future there will be quite a few in the near future I should say there's all the usual social media down there as well if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Estonian beers that I've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Poyala once again then on to my brewery notes so as I've told you already Poyala are based in Tallinn the capital city on the north coast of Estonia and the company was founded by Peter Keek N. Parrell, Green Normans, and then they were later joined by Teed Pananen as well so the group apparently went on a fact-finding trip to Brewdog in Scotland uh, after Punk IPA reached Estonia and these guys were just you know really kind of fascinated with this beer and wanted to see how it was made so it was at Brewdog though that two of the founders who were interning with Brewdog encountered Chris Pilkington and he went on to join the company as their head brewer and he is now a part owner of the company as well but Chris had actually graduated in marketing and he was an avid home brewer as well but he was producing some really interesting beers on the pilot kit and this prompted the guys to try and get him to come over to Estonia he accepted and they've never looked back so the company was officially founded back in 2012 and then from 2013 they began to gypsy brew at a few other breweries around Tallinn so the name Poyala, which means Northern Realm, was chosen as the name of the company and they say that they just wanted something distinctly, you know, Estonian if you like, and they liked this idea of you know the north being kind of dark and mysterious and all these kind of things and it goes along with a lot of the beers that they do because you know probably if you think of Poyala you think of the darker beers that they do rather than the IPAs um, but uh, yeah the IPAs that said the IPAs are good don't take that as a knock against the IPAs and um, these guys do some awesome beers in pretty much any style if you like but yeah they wanted something kind of dark and mysterious for the name of the brewery if you like and um, but they opened their own brewery a little bit later in May of 2014 and this was in the Numa district to the south of the city this one had an initial capacity of 12 hectolitres but this was scaled up considerably over the years they started exporting their beer in 2015 and the brewery are now widely known throughout Europe and further afield I've seen their beers in Japan I think you can get them in Australia these days if I remember correctly I'm not sure if you find them over in the States come to think of it but I do I don't know about South America either but I know that they have gone fairly far east and you can get them pretty much all across the European continent these days as well. In the first brewery they did have a tap room which had 24 different taps in it um, but later in 2018 they, as of 2018 they've moved into their new brewery in the Noblesner shipyard in Northern Tallinn which is a very very impressive facility if you go and check out my Meet the Brewery video you can see my interview with Chris and N and you can see a walk round of the brewery there as I say very very impressive facility that they have there this brewery is equipped with a 50 hectolitre 4 vessel system uh, from Rolex 
in Germany and uh, they've got a restaurant there as well in the tap room which I think has 30 taps but the restaurant serves American barbecue food on Fridays and Saturdays and um, they've also got a very talented pastry chef and they're currently looking at opening up a little kind of separate bakery thing to uh, make full use of her skills actually which I think is pretty damn cool but um, yeah definitely a brewery that you want to check out these guys probably the best known Estonian craft brewery these days worldwide and as of August 2020 and um, these guys have produced 69 different kinds of beer according to uh, to untapped so yeah a fairly prolific brewery when you consider they've been around for uh, about uh, when they've been around for about eight years or so now, I guess you could say eight years in total, but I guess you could say six years actively, you know, 10, um, 10, more than 10 beers a year. I think roughly about one beer a month, if you think about it. And um, these guys have been fairly active over the last couple of years. And as I say, very good brew in my opinion. I've never had a bad beer from Poyola, but probably these guys are best known for uh, adding different adjuncts and things into beer as well. But um, yeah, let's leave it at that for the history section of the video. If you want to learn more, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and things like that to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all those 70 different beers that they've done. So um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. Just to tell you about the hop and malt bill on this one, this one is a 6.5% IPA. It's hopped with Columbus, Citra, Yellow Sub, Azaka and it has a malt base of Pale, Carapale and Crystal 150. And uh, Yellow Sub of course is the hop that kind of stands out there. From what I remember it's just it's quite a citrusy, uh, I remember it being quite a lemony citrusy hop and it's from the States if I remember correctly. So uh, yeah we know the other ones, Columbus is you know a kind of standard bittering hop, Citra is uh, your, your, your mango and quite complex one and then Azaka is quite orangey but it's also got a little bit of a pineapple-y element to it from what I remember as well. So uh, yeah, let's see how we uh, how we get on with this one. Yellow, I'm curious to see what the yellow sub is like again actually. But yeah, um, I'll, I'll let's let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open up. Once again, the bottle is sweating because of the sheer temperatures that we're having here in Tallinn at the moment. But um, yeah, it says a powerful IPA with a citrus kick. Uh, Vermalisa uses a blend of hops including citra and azaka. So I'm guessing when it's those two that are mentioned, these two are the main kind of flavour and aroma hops. As you can see with this one, this one has a black poya, uh, poyala cap on it. Some of them have white, um, of course, but uh, yeah, really nicely presented this one as always from poyala. And uh, another interesting point was that N was telling me that um, the, uh, the artwork man that they have, he's actually a part owner of uh, the company as well. So yeah, let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting then. Let me just get this done, if it can grip. Doesn't want it. There we go, there we go. Yep, nicely done, nicely done. So yeah, let's get this guy out and into the glass. This looks pretty good, yes. There we are. So yes, as you can see, um, this glass is still. I think I gave it, again. I gave it a rinse out before. I ah, don't know, but yes, as you can see with this one, it's poured a lovely kind of. This this one has poured a lovely kind of bright golden yellow color. It's actually not too dissimilar from the Moonraker that I reviewed um, earlier on today. Um, but yeah, it's actually not too different in color from um, from the Moonraker. To be honest with you, um, just obviously not as hazy, which is kind of what you would expect of uh, of a West Coast IPA. But uh, this one has a quarter finger of a of a perfect white head. This one, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, and a few little ones kind of heading up towards the bottom of the head there. But yeah, let's have a look at the aroma of this one and see how we got. Nothing particularly surprising about this beer in terms of appearance. You do tend to expect the more West Coasty IPAs to have a little bit more. Kind of haze to them, or a little bit, a little bit of haze, but not a massive kind of haze, if you like. But um, yeah, let's have a look at that aroma then and see how we get on. Yeah, this one's really nice. This one actually smells very much like the brewery did when uh, <laughs> when I was walking through it. Um, so yeah, malt base with this one then. Straight away with this beer, you'll smell the kind of lovely kind of pale malty quality coming out of this one. 
um, you do get a little bit of that lovely kind of biscuity note that you would expect of a West Coast IP as well. Some of them can be a little bit more oily and caramelly to be honest with you. This one has Crystal which if I remember rightly is an American malt variety and Crystal malt I really like. It gives you a lovely um, sort of sweet sweet bready but also kind of very lightly kind of biscuity caramel type note to it. Crystal malts I think are probably one of my favourite malt varieties when it comes to the lighter styles of beer. Um, but yeah, straight away with this one, you've got a lovely kind of pale malty base to it. You've got a lovely little bit of that McVitie's digestive kind of thing. There's maybe a teeny, teeny little bit of a kind of brighter sweet caramel to the beer. One or two, maybe very slightly um, kind of grainy notes to it. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's quite bready and very, very kind of... It's quite bready, quite smooth, quite biscuity. Just a little bit of sweet caramel too. So I really like how this one... Um, I really, really like how this one... Um, goes together actually. The aroma and the malt base in this is awesome. Not the sweetest of West Coasty type IPAs that you're going to come across, but um, yeah, pretty damn solid I think in the way it goes together. And you can see yeah, the glass is behaving itself a bit better now. It's not carbonation is not really sticking to the side, which is good. But um, yeah, looks uh, the aroma. Of this one malt base is very nice. On the green side of the hops then. Nice little tiny bit of earthiness there, some floral aromaticity, a little bit of a lighter grassy note too, and then you've got some very juicy um, fruity notes coming out of the beer also. So with this one straight away, you can pick out a little bit of that juicy mango. For me, this one has a good bit of a citrusy zest. I get quite a lot of liminess out of this one in fairness. I think this has got quite a lot of a limey character to it. Um... Yeah, definitely quite limey. Um, so yeah, good bit of a kind of mango note to it in fairness. I think you get that's the one of the kind of citrusy notes. I think the yellow sub is giving you that sort of lemony, limey vibe that this beer has. Um, I always remember yellow sub being a sort of yeah le lemony kind of limey hop, if I remember rightly. But yeah, for me, this one, the, one of the things that really stands out of this beer for me is the lime. Um, you can smell a bit of the, the kind of... You do get a little bit of an orangey note to this one as well on the front of the nose. So yeah, that'll be from the Azaka and you do get a bit of that kind of pineapple note. So yeah, it's interesting how this one develops. I think when you first take it in, it comes across as quite limey. Um, and slightly, you know, you've got a little bit of that slight kind of passion fruity note that citra can sometimes give you as well. You've got a bit of that darker kind of note and a bit of citrusy zest in there. But the more that you smell of this beer, again, it gets a little bit more kind of juicy and things like that. So it's really interesting how that side of the beer uh, all goes together. Um, yeah, I do like the aroma in this one, I have to say. Um, but yeah, so for me, a bit of mango in there, um, definitely a good bit of lime, I think. You do get a wee bit of gooseberry in some of these kind of complexities that you can get from Citra, but I think the yellow sub is giving you a good bit of lime, lemon, kind of limey character out of this one, and that's only going to be promoted further by the... Um, that's only going to be promoted further by the Citra, because Citra does have its own lemon limey qualities. So yeah, quite lemony, quite limey, a little bit of an orangey note in there as well. Bit of pineapple, the Azaka kind of showing you exactly what you expect from it if you know the hop. But yeah, to me the fruits come across as slightly oily in this one, but at the same time there is a bit of a kind of wetter juiciness to it as well. But yeah, a really, um, a very nice smelling. West Coasty type IPA, this one actually. Um, it does lean to a little more kind of bready end of the spectrum for a West Coast IPA, so bear that in mind with this one. But um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. Let's have a little taste of it once again. So this one is the Vir Malised 6.5% um, West Coast type IPA from po uh, Poyala here in Tallinn in Estonia. 6.5% ABV. Let's get stuck in, guys. Slange, Skull, Tervi 6. Yeah, this is really nice. Um, it definitely strikes me as being one of the more kind of like new type takes on a, a West Coast IPA, if that makes sense. I don't know how long this beer has actually been out for, I can't remember. But um, yeah. But yeah, this one, it strikes me as being a kind of more modern type take on a West Coast IPA, if you like. Uh, it does have a bit more bitterness, but it's very—it's got the level of juiciness that you expect of a kind of New England 
these days actually so yeah first impressions of that i like this beer i do like this one it's definitely got the kind of sweet malty things you expect of the west coast but it just i think it needs a bit more bitterness to be honest with you there's absolutely nothing wrong with this beer this is really nice very very drinkable but for me i think i, I think this one i would rather than describe it as a west coaster i would describe it as a more you could probably describe this as like a modern ipa like it's a little bit new england it's a little bit west coasty it's got a little bit of both to be honest with you it is more like one of these kind of modern takes on the west coast ipa if that makes sense so yeah As I say, I do like this one. So yeah, in terms of the malt base then, let's kick off with that. Straight away with this beer, you can feel that pale malt equality. That blankets the middle of your tongue and gives you a nice kind of white bready base. Um, as you go further into the, um, as you go further into it with this beer, you do get a little bit more graininess coming out of this one. Yeah, it does start to develop in the middle of the palate. It starts to develop a little bit of a kind of brown bready vibe to it which is quite nice. And um, Towards the back of the palate there, you get a little bit more of a kind of graininess coming out of the beer. You do get a, a little bit of grainy quality at the very back of the tongue there. But yeah, the most of the complexity coming out of this beer is in the middle of the palate. So yeah, there's a bit of the more brown bready note at the back of the tongue, a bit of a kind of um, drier graininess there. Sweet kind of white bready base, but then a bit of a brown bready note on the top of it in the middle of the palate. You've got a little bit of a kind of sweet um, caramelly note in the very centre of your tongue and as you move out from that centre of your palate it gets a little bit more biscuity pardon me and um, gets a little bit more biscuity and a little bit more kind of um, make, like McVitie's digestive I feel like it's almost got a wee touch of a kind of Werther's original um, flavour to it this beer as well just in the very centre of your palate so I like how that goes together the the way that the, the boozy sweetness comes out of this one and it's not too pronounced, I should say. The little bit, the way that the kind of brown sugars cover up the booziness in this one is quite nice, I have to say. And that would be the crystal malt that's doing that. Big fan of crystal malt, as I said. I think I might have said earlier that crystal is American, and I think I'm probably the thing that was in my head there was Turo. So my apologies for that, that was an error I made earlier, it's just come to me. But yeah, the way that the malt base goes together in this one is nice and you can feel it retains that breadiness but it does get slightly sweeter later on. On the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, um, there is a little bit of um, a little bit of earthiness there. Very minimal though, but as you move further forward you get a wee touch of herbal quality but then quite quickly it becomes more floral and aromatic. You do get a little bit of that spiciness from Columbus. Columbus has got quite a distinct spiciness and it was a very popular hop to use in the West Coast IPAs along with the likes of Chinook. Things like that. Those were always the two big bittering hops for me. But yeah, you do get a little bit of that distinctive spicy note from, um, from, from Columbus. But it's not as spicy as it can be. Be honest with you, like I say though, this is not the highest IBU beer. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But yeah, around the very front curve of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of a lighter kind of grassy quality to the beer. And then behind the front curve of the tongue, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters push their way out. So yeah, on the fruity side of things with this beer then, you've got, uh, if you go towards the back of the tongue, there's a teeny little bit of that, that, the back of the front third of your palate, sorry, the back of that oily bubble, you've got a little bit of a slightly stronger passion fruity note, some lovely kind of mango notes in front of that, then as you move further forward, I think the beer, it really starts to develop into a kind of mix of sort of orangey, uh, a, a kind of orangey and pineapple note, but there is a wee bit of a limey, a juicy limey note, um, kind of right on the edge of the tongue there as well, so for me, um, it goes passion fruit, mango, then a little bit orangey, juicy tangerine orangey, then you start to get the kind of pineapple mixing in with that and then on the very edge of the tongue it's just got a little bit of a kind of limey juicy quality to it and it's got a wee bit of zest around the very kind of front a bit of a kind of lemony limey zest around the front kind of curve of your tongue too but yeah this is a really really nice IPA this one I, I like this you know you could sit and drink this all day 6.5 percent is your kind of standard ABV for um for an IPA these days and I think this is one um you know I do, I, in some ways, I do like beers to kind of nail their colours to the mast, if you like, right? Either be a full blown New England or be a full blown West Coast. Don't do this, don't kind of tread the middle roads to please everybody. But I have to say, you know, I have come across beers that I would call, you know, modern 
takes on the West Coast IPA. And I think, you know, they are solid. There's nothing wrong with them um, in that sense. I'm not, you know, it's just me being a little bit picky, to be honest. But I think I do like this one. This is very, very easy to drink. And it's it's got a really nice kind of flavour profile on it for me, this one. I really, I, I, th I think I like this one quite a lot. So, yeah, um, I wish this was a bit more easily available for me, but I'm glad that I got to do a, a review of it nonetheless. So, again, thank you to N. For making this review possible because I don't know if this beer has actually been through um, Sweden. I think it might have been last year but I didn't take one for some reason. I don't know why. But um, yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel then with this one, I think we've covered the flavour. Um, yeah, it's kind of pushing towards the top end of mid-bodied. The carbonation is very smooth. It's got a degree of oiliness to it which you expect of this beer style. In terms of the, the IBUs, um, again, like I said, this is the one kind of criticism I can have of it. If it was really nailing its colours as to the mast as a West Coast IP, you'd want 60 or 70 IBUs out of this. I think this one is like 50, something like that. I think it's kind of sitting there. It might even be 40. Um, I don't really find too much in the way of bitterness out of this one. So yeah, this one's got to be either 40 or 50 IBUs, I think. Um, the middle of your palate, like I say, the malty side of things, lovely smoothness to it, but a little touch of sweetness. Um, 50 IBUs, 40, 50 IBUs, I think, and you've got a lovely oiliness to the, the fruity character of this one. You've got a good blend of the kind of softer, juicier, tropical notes, as I said, as well as a little bit of a more kind of uh, citrusy, zesty type quality too. But yeah, really like how this one goes together, and it's another thumbs up for uh, from me. For, uh, for 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 Poyala once again. I need to make sure I get the stress in that word right. I keep mispronouncing it, but yeah, Poyala. Um, yeah. So yeah, this one the the Vir Vir said really really nice. Um, sort of modern IP, I guess you could call it. It's six point five percent. I recommend that you try this one. It's been cool to try the yellow sub again. I think that is contributing quite a bit to the more kind of limey limey type qualities that this beer has. It's quite limey, to be honest, now that I think about it. But, um, yeah, really nicely done beer, this one, once again. So let's leave it at that. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Poyala as well. This has been the Virma Lee Sid, uh, the Northern Lights, as it's called, 6.5% ABV. And, uh, yeah, really... I have uh, really, really enjoyed reviewing this one for you again. So make sure you check out Poyala, check out their website, follow them on Facebook and Instagram and things like that, and have a go at the Veer Millie said if you get the chance. Until the next time, Slanja just now, and I'll catch you guys later. Slanja, school, make sure you check out this beer, and if you haven't, try some of the Poyala beers. Really damn good, actually. Very strong craft beer scene here in Estonia these days. Cheers.